So today we are going to start our mini unit on transformations. So now that you are experts on graphing linear equations, I'm going to use some vocabulary uh, called a parent graph. And the parent graph of linear equations is this line. So the parent graph equation is just f of x equals x, or if you don't like f of x, y equals x. So if y equals x, my slope is 1, and my y-intercept is 0, 0. Now let's think about what the word transform means. You're all familiar with transformers. Okay, transform means to change. So what we're going to look for today are patterns that if we change our equation, how does it change our parent graph? If we change our parent graph function equation, how does it change our parent graph? So let's take a look at this handout and we're gonna look for patterns. Okay, so have this and, and anytime if you need to stop the video, please do. So here's our parent graph, y equals x, y-intercept is zero, zero, slope of one. Now, I'm gonna encourage you to stop the video and I would like you to graph a, b, c, and d and then start the video again. And let's talk about how the parent graph was changed, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this equation. If you don't like g of x, you could write this as y equals x plus four. So we know the y-intercept is zero, four, and the slope is one. So zero, four, up one, right one, down one, left one. I don't know if you can see this, but I sketched in the parent graph. So look at this equation and look at this equation. How did the graph change? It moved up four. Okay, let's go to this equation. Y-intercept of zero, two, slope of one. So zero, two, up one, right one. Here's my parent graph that I just sketched in there so I could see how did the red change from the parent graph? It moved up two. So again, we're trying to look for patterns here. How does changing an equation change the graph? All right, let's take a look at C. This has a y-intercept of zero, negative two, slope of one, up one, right one, up one, right one. Okay, so how did this change from the parent graph? I moved down two. Take a look at D. Y-intercept is zero, negative four, slope of one. How did this graph change from this graph to this graph? It moved down four. So hopefully you've already made a conclusion that another way to look at this is comparing it to the parent graph. If you have a number added, it's going to move the graph up. If you have a number subtracted, it's going to move the graph down. All right, now let's go down to these four. Again, I would encourage you to stop the video, graph them, and then write how they compared to our parent graph equation. So I know you all know how to graph these, and you're like, why do I need to compare? Because this idea of transformation carries on to other functions besides linear functions. So we're trying to look for patterns. So go ahead, stop the video and graph those next four. All right, so um, if I take a look here, this has a y-intercept of zero, zero, slope of one half. So I went up one, right two. I sketched in in pencil my parent graph equation and we can tell this is flatter. Okay, now I'm gonna use a term that's called a vertical shrink. It made it flatter. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We know the slope is two, y-intercept zero, zero. I went up two, right one, up two, right one. This is steeper. The fancy term or math term is called a vertical shrink. And then let's take a look at C. The y-intercept was zero, zero, slope of negative one half. So it went up one, left two, up one, left two. So this was made flatter compared to the parent graph, but also wasn't it flipped over or reflected. So this was the fancy term flatter, which means a vertical shrink, and it was reflected. And D, um, y-intercept zero, zero, slope of negative two, up two left one, down two right one, and if I compare it to the parent graph, it is definitely steeper, and it was reflected. So it's a vertical stretch and reflection. So now let's use this, these conclusions that we've made in order to um, do matching. So I want you to go to this next exploration, this three, six handout. I want you to stop the video and based on what we just did, let's do some matching. 
So stop the video, see if you can look at the equation and match the graph. Okay, so up here, I went ahead and sketched in our parent graph, y equals x, y intercept zero, zero, slope of one. So what happened to this graph? So I just wrote down what happened. I know it's gonna be moved down four, so it's a y intercept of zero, negative four. I know it has a slope of two, but it also means that it's steeper than the parent graph or vertically stretched. So that's why it is C. All right, part B. I know that this has a Y intercept of zero two, which means compared to the parent graph, it was moved up two. I know this has a slope of negative two. So the two means it's gonna be steeper than that line and the negative means it's gonna be decreasing. So the fancy term or math terms are it's a vertical stretch and it is reflected. So part, this graph was, this equation was graph A. All right, next equation, I know that my y-intercept is zero four, my slope is one half, and so this was translated up four, so a movement is called a translation, just so that if you hear that, you understand that. And this had a slope of one half, so we know it's gonna be flatter, and we know the correct word for that is called a vertical shrink and that would be the graph in D. And last but not least, we know by elimination, this has to be the graph for B, but let's take a look why. We know this has a y-intercept of zero, negative two, which means from the parent graph it moved down to. We know that it's flatter, the slope is one half, so it's a vertical shrink. And we also know it is reflected, so we know it's going to be going downhill or decreasing. Okay, so now, based on those conclusions, let's go to your vocabulary sheet. Okay, so we have talked about most of these types of transformations. All right, so transformation means to change our equation or change our graph. Well, changing the equation will transform the graph. So a parent function is our most basic function. So right now we only have one parent function and that's the parent function for linear equations or lines. And that is y equals x or f of x equals x. Slope is one, y-intercept is zero, zero. So now how can we transform the graph? Well, we can change it in size, which would mean change in slope. We can change it uh, in shape, which that's not happening with linear equations. And we can change the position. In other words, if we move the graph, we can reflect it. Okay, for right now, I'm going to skip horizontal translation because we haven't done that yet, but I'm gonna take a look at vertical translation. Vertical means that my graph has moved up or down. So for an example, we know that for our parent graph, that this equation, this graph would be moved up four, which makes sense because the y-intercept is zero, four. We know this one would be moved down four, which makes sense because this would have a y-intercept of zero, negative four. Okay, a reflection means that the graph will be flipped. All right, or going the opposite direction. So when does a reflection occur? A reflection occurs when there's a negative on the outside. And that totally makes sense because we know that if I slope is negative, it's going to be decreasing. All right, let's talk about a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. Well, with lines, we know that that means that the slope is different. A vertical st stretch means that this is gonna be a steeper line. When's that gonna happen? When this is bigger than one. A vertical shrink means that it's going to be a flatter line or a smaller slope. And that's gonna happen when it's less than one. Now, a horizontal translation, we're gonna talk more about those with other functions. But with this, I'll go back, this means that it's moving left or right, and I'll explain more when we get to other functions. But if I have it in parentheses with the x, it's gonna be the opposite, it's gonna move right three. And if I have it in parentheses with the x and I have x plus three, it's gonna be moved left three. Okay, so what is our conclusion? And this is a big conclusion. So if I give you, I know this looks complicated, but let's take it apart. What do each of these changes do to the graph? Well, we know that a negative for linear equations, which means it's gonna be reflected or a negative slope, all right? A number in front that is greater than one, so a number bigger than one is gonna be steeper. It's gonna be have a bigger slope, so it's gonna be called vertical stretch. A number uh, less than one, we know it's gonna be a smaller slope, and so it's going to be flatter, which means it's a vertical shrink. And we know that if we add a number, 
outside, we know it's gonna move up K. So for lines, that means it's gonna be, the y-intercept's gonna be changed. Or if it's a negative, it's gonna be moved down K or the y-intercept will, will be down. Now, the horizontal left and right, we haven't done a lot with those yet, but if I have a number with the X, if it's a minus H, it moves to the right. And if it is a left H, it moves to the left. Okay, we will leave it at that for right now, and we will continue and do the rest of those problems tomorrow.